Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the news behind the news with Ralph Kintav on Mix 94.7 FM. And I hope you've been having a good day so far. Um, as mentioned, this week we'll definitely be featuring quite a bit of our young professionals here in St. Martin. I'm glad that uh, a couple of folks that I know are, are back on the island on vacation. <laughs> and so we're, we're also going to reel them in, you know, for uh, a quick interview while they enjoy the beach and food and everything else. <laughs> um, I have here with me Mr. Sean York, a uh, great gentleman, um, you know, a well-known graphic designer, I would say, uh, artist here in St. Martin. And I must also big him up because, you know, he is a creator of the iconic 37 square miles t-shirt i like that yeah. iconic oh well, for sure for sure i mean you know a lot of people they they do they create shirts especially for some martin day and stuff but i like that your shirts um they stand out yeah, that's why i say iconic nice. um and in addition to that you designed um the covers for both of my books <laughs> the first one um and I the second another one copy by the way yeah i got hook you up <laughs> all right <laughs> so good afternoon sean and thank you for coming on the program man yeah, good afternoon to you too, and uh, thank you again for allowing me to be on your platform and letting my voice be heard by the thousands and thousands. Cool, <laughs> cool. So uh, for those of a while, you know, I still introduce you, give a, a little bit about yourself, well, you know, uh, give the people some more details. Who is Sean York? That's such a broad question. So many moons ago, I was born in the hospital. I'm <laughs> just joking. Um, to me. Uh, born and raised on St. Martin. I'm from Sucker Garden. I studied at MPC, graduated. Then, so I graduated from VS, VSMBO. Let's say Marvel. Mm -hmm. uh, then I went to Havo, but ended up dropping out. And then I started to work, but then didn't really like the work. And, well, who really... I mean, you can't really control where you work, you know, when you're just fresh out of school. Yeah, fresh so. out of school, yeah. But uh, a friend of mine in Holland, so my friend was calling me up because he, he, we went to school together and he was familiar with my designs and stuff like that. He was like, why you ain't up here studying with me? And I was like, uh, I didn't really have an answer. And then he told me, he actually shouted to Sherwin, that's his name. He actually uh, told me about a school in the Netherlands, a design school. Mm-hmm. He, he even went so far as to send me the application form and stuff like that. Oh, that's a real friend, man. Yeah. So he sent it, sent it to me. He told me, hey, don't have your hopes too high. It's hard to get into school. So I just did it, sent it in, and I got accepted. That's cool. Yeah. So I went to the, the Netherlands, studied for four years, graduated. And I think what helped me a lot was... I was, when I was in St. Martin, I was in a job I didn't like. So when I went up there, I went with some extra motivation. Mm -hmm. So I was so in that to play that, Not work a job that you don't like. Basically. Yeah, so like, you know, when other students complaining about, you know, like stuff, I'm like, yeah, I know what the alternative is, you know. So I'm like, nah, I, I need to finish this and I need to, to learn all of this stuff so I could go into the field I want to be in. Cool. You know, because like... Uh, you know, watching numbers all day on the paper, that's not me. Like, that's what I was doing, and my brain couldn't digest that. Yeah. So, yeah, I got the opportunity, took adva full advantage of it, and then I wanted to continue because that was, um, what is the word? That was, so I was MBO. I did ha MBO first. So then, you know, I spoke to some people, and I wanted to, you know, elevate. So I was like, okay, the, the next logical step was to do habio so i did that graduated from there as well and then i entered entered the job market in the netherlands and you know some people get lucky and they get a job right out of school but uh for the most part i think it's, it's a challenge coming out especially if you're from the islands just getting a job right out of the gate what, so what for me, sorry go ahead yeah so for me it was a uh, challenging in the beginning so i went I could say two and a half years without employment. Wow. Yeah. So, so then you just basically did stuff on your own. Yeah, I was doing any and everything. So I got like part time work and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I registered my business in the Netherlands as well. So freelance design. Um, yeah, I was just doing a bunch of little things just to maintain. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So the question I was going to ask you was um, what, do, what do you attribute to that? Um, is it. Um, the competition is too, too, it's too much, so a bunch of people fighting for the same job, or uh, what do you say, it's because you're an islander that that is a factor, or just that there's not enough jobs available? 
funny enough, my current job right now, my task before I went on vacation was to interview people applying for the jobs. So I get to see, you know, peek behind the curtain and see at least that company's job interview process. And to answer your question, I would say there's a bunch of different factors that can't, that lead to the difficulty of you getting a job, right? So the first one is the oversaturated market. You have, like, you know, thousands of students graduate. Well, mm, let's say hundreds of students graduating each year. And there's only so much job positions for uh, junior roles, right? So you have that. You also have to compete with people who did internships at companies. So they have, you know, how to say, they have... They have a buy-in, basically. Yeah, buy-in. Yeah, they have a voran. I don't know the English word for that. They have a preference. Mm -hmm. And um, what else? Contributing factors. Of course, language could be a barrier as well. Mm -hmm. For example, I went to an English school. So if I'm applying to a Dutch company and they see, like, my Dutch is a little choppy or not up to par... Well, they can go, obviously, with somebody who is more fluent. Did I make you, would you say that uh, while studying the way you, you challenged yourself to improve your, your Dutch? Oh, definitely. I did language courses in addition to my study. Cool. So, I did that. Um, but I definitely didn't want to work at a Dutch company, though. Because, mm. not saying that you should follow my steps, but for me, personally, I found that it slowed down my process when I had to switch to a different language to to execute to work. Mm -hmm. So I went to a Dutch school. You get taught in Dutch. Even English is taught in Dutch. So you got a, a Dutch word book, <laughs> and they have the English translation. So I was like, this, this isn't for <laughs> me. I should have went to Academy or something like that. But <laughs> no, I'm happy where I went. NPC, I represent all day. Um, but for, like I was saying, I personally prefer to do things in English because I feel like to translate gotcha. that's like I don't know I think some people naturally have that talent with languages and I don't think that was where my gifts were gotcha. so I recognize my strengths and I try to maximize in those areas cool so one of the things okay I wanted to touch a bit on, on how you got into art and stuff mm -hmm. but uh, before I get to that you mentioned you know, that you registered your business in the Netherlands and stuff so how was that process like what do you say it was, it was difficult it was easy and how was the, the learning curve super easy hmm. the only difficult thing was understanding what you did <laughs> so you could register easy sign up easy all you have to do is explain what your business is especially if it's a uh, in manzak like you know you're just doing it on a small scale it's super easy process but they expect you to know how to handle your business so how to file your taxes how to keep proper bookkeeping and stuff like that so that that was a um, you know, learning process, but just to register is easy, mm. and you don't have to pay a yearly fee. <laughs> no, Interesting. No, not taking any shots. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> uh, so, in addition to that, uh, Sean, well, you know, I know you as an artist, a uh, graphic designer, but you know, back in the day, you also used to rap, uh, Mr. Guess Who. Yes. <laughs> so, what was what would you say introduced you into the field of art? So, or did did you feel like? Um, just growing up, you were just more inclined to the artistic field, and and how and at what point did you commit to it? Ooh, that's a loaded question. So, I I would just say I gravitated naturally to to arts, to self expression. I think that's what it boils down to. Ultimately, is just self expression, and uh, how I got into rapping. Like so I rapping and, 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 and drawing art. as well, yeah. Yeah, so drawing is just something I did in school, you know, for fun, for entertainment purposes. And I also <laughs> I also made some money off of it because people would ask me to draw stuff for them. True. To the point that it got to tattoos, like, hey, draw this so I could get it tattooed on my, me. So I definitely made some money with that. And that also boosted my confidence because I was just doing it for fun. Mm -hmm. And... You know, the ultimate validation is, is somebody telling you they're going to put it on your skin, you know. So and they trust your work that much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, oh, people ain't just telling me this for fun, you know. Like, oh, they're just being nice. No, they're really into it. So that's how I got into it. Just It's just something, Um, yeah. Okay. I didn't have a, no, I was going to say I didn't have iPads and stuff like how these kids have nowadays. But you could go, get into drawing with iPads. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, but I was going to say, like, I didn't have much distractions. So like, then, uh, I get what you're saying. So then naturally, I guess you transitioned into graphic design with Adobe and so forth. Woo! Yes, when I found... Um, found out about these softwares and stuff like that i think i did a job uh job fair that mpc had uh created mm -hmm. and then my job fair was at the herald that is where i met my uh, uh one of my first mentors mark he's a, a graphic designer at the daily herald and yeah he just introduced me to the software and what were you capable of and most importantly how you can make a living off of it mm -hmm. so from there i knew what the possibilities were with this field because before that i was like okay how can I make money? Or how can I make a living with this skill set? Correct. And this, and the only skill set I saw was the architect, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Because, but yeah, architect is not creative. Uh, well, they are creative, but it's more technical drawing, you know. Yeah. So that that would have been my other path had I not uh, came across. Mark Interesting. At the Daily you know, I'm glad this will be interviewing you because. Um, you know, uh, we like for example, s last month I think it was I uh, interviewed Leo Richardson. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a professional drummer, and I was really blown away. You know, at, at the level at which he performs, mm -hmm. and and which is why I'm glad to be speaking to you because oftentimes persons in the field of the arts, you know, that's where parents, society tends to get a bit skeptical. Like, are you 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 really gonna study dance? You're really gonna study art? You're really gonna study, you know, you know, um, music? But you know, um. When you look at how our society is set up, uh, all these fields contribute to even the very, let's say, maybe mundane task or, or, or fields. And so with that, you know, I'm curious from, from your perspective to you, why, why is design so important? And, and, and how, <clears throat> what, is that, what have you learned through your process you know, as a designer? Why is design so important? Design is important to me because... First of all, I firmly believe if you have if you are fortunate to have the opportunity to do something you're good at and get uh, paid for it, I think that's a beautiful thing. And I recognize, okay, this is an area that that I excel at, and I found a way on how to how to create revenue from it. Not everybody, uh, not everybody figures that out. So when I figured it out, I was like, okay. This is what I could do with design. And yeah, what was the second part of your question? Uh, so my, my second part of the question was, what have you learned from this? What, what, what were the takeaways then, you know, in being a designer, in studying design? Well, <laughs> there's so many takeaways. We could get philosophical with design. So go, go right ahead. Man. One of the most interesting things I learned about design is how psychological design could be. Mm -hmm. So, for example... When you create something, you're not just creating something to look pretty. It's not just, oh, you just throw red and blue. No. Who is your audience? How do you reach this audience? What was the best me method to uh, approach? Should you be direct? Should you be indirect? Because that's also like a, a cultural thing too. Because some, some people, for example, don't like to... And let me... Oh, I'll need that for later. So... Uh, you also have to know what you're designing for. Is it a serious message? Is it something playful? Like, for example, uh, I'll give you a great example. My thesis was about child communicating the difference between child abuse and child discipline to a Caribbean audience. Mm. That's so, a heavy topic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I put myself in that um, hot water. So, again, you just can't go design a flyer and say, stop hitting your child. You really have to get understand the psychology of what's happening, mm -hmm. so so you best can dis, uh, communicate a message that would uh, reach this audience and that they would at least at the very minimal process it like okay what's this saying, and but that's that's research as that's research design is communication is they're all wrapped in one but it's all you could put it under the umbrella of design and communication because hmm. you're designing a message. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm glad you mentioned that um, communication aspect because um, you know we we do understand visual, you know, visual language. Let's say, mm -hmm. yeah. So one of the things that came to mind, even as you're speaking, is a song uh, that uh, that you created. I think it was when you just left Saint Martin to Holland. Uh, I can't remember the name of that song, but I remember you rapping about the different, the changing currency, and you know what I'm trying to talk about. I think so, yeah. I think the song was called 37 Square Miles. 
Oh, I can't remember, but... Uh, it was about St. Martin. Yeah. It's yeah. probably that. Yeah, so well, my question is, I guess, generally, is, you know, having created the 37 square mile shirt, um, well, first of all, what was the inspiration for that? The inspiration was I was back on the island on vacation, and it was my first time being away from the island for a year, and... I didn't really realize how much I, like, missed home until, like, you touch down, mm-hmm. you hear the accents, you see the people, because I was, you know, in a country where I was a minority, and, you know, back here I'm on the majority, so, yeah, just, and just going around, re- um, s- seeing stuff that you grew up with, going to the beaches, because in the Netherlands don't have beaches, and, um, yeah, just that nostalgia, that feeling. I don't know how to put it to, in words, mm-hmm. but that that was just priceless to me. So one of the things I did was I created a shirt just for myself. It was really just for myself to have something that represent home. Mm. And I always like to say that, you know, I created a shirt that says St. Martin without saying St. Martin. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So I That's brilliant, it. too. <laughs> yeah. So, and what ended up happening is, uh, yeah, people from here would see it and understand it, but people from abroad or anywhere else would see it and have no idea what it represents or means. So I always thought that was cool. It's like a coded language. You know, a lot of people say we don't have culture, but we do have culture. Yeah, for sure. You know, that that is a representation of culture. If you could spot something and understand what it is and somebody from somewhere else can't, that's culture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I love you say that. And, uh, you know, when people say things like Simon, don't know culture and stuff, I say, listen, um, the very way of speaking is culture <laughs> is culture that's a man identity no one i mean my heck variants close to it mm-hmm. but the exact way and nah that's just us you know mm-hmm. um but that's that's pretty cool and because you know i was also curious like why 37 square miles i know we have like the uh, the xxm and, and all the different ones but but i like that you said you know it's, it sort of was like a coded um yeah. language and and how has it been since since you you launched that and and because you know Again, going back to the arts and stuff, this something you created for yourself ended up becoming a business venture, you know? Yeah, it was uh, in the beginning, it was very interesting because I, I was learning. Mm-hmm. I'm still learning. But in the beginning, it was a lot of learning because you fig- figuring out how to do, you know, inventory and balancing your budget. Like, okay, this is how much I can invest. This is how much I'm going to price the product at. And this is how much I can get in return. Now, what do I do with this profit? I have to reinvest. I have to, you know, save some for myself, but save some for, you know, like a contingency plan in case things go left. Or you know. So I learned a lot about business, learned about developing business plans as well. And, yeah, it was just an amazing journey so far. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And, and so how did you also go about exploring the island, you know, for your own self? Uh, taking a different look at it, you know, from the way you grew up. And w- what about St. Martin, re- you know, stands out to you? Um, the, the main thing that stands out to me is just the island itself, the the landscape, the, the beaches, the, the hike trails, the, the things that I think a lot of people take for granted. Because you would, for example, I would come on the island on vacation, I would go beach a couple times, I would meet up with friends here, and, and they would be living here and, haven't gone to the beach in like a year or two, three years. And I'm like, how? Uh, it's easy for me to say, but um, when, you, when you have it, when you're surrounded by it, I don't think you, you appreciate it as much. Uh, you just take it for granted. Not take it for granted, but you have other things going on, you know, because yeah. people have busy lives. I understand that. Um, but what, what I was saying is that people, what I recognize that's amazing about St. Martin is just, there's so many things you could do that a lot of people just don't do. Mm-hmm. Like, like there's so many like amazing like places to visit and 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 yeah, j- like for example, Pinal, Tantamar, uh, the different hike trails, the the seaside nature park, horse ha- horseback riding. Um, I don't know what's the status with the zoo. No, that's the <laughs> non-existent, basically. <laughs> Unfortunately, but yeah. I know, but uh, and just recently, I saw like um, on the French French Quarter, they was doing like a bike bicycle race for the little kids and stuff like that. So there's just so many different things happening on the island that you could get involved with, mm-hmm. and I don't think like a lot of people know about all these different activities. 
just like to bring it to the forefront yeah basically yeah. yeah so one of the things i wanted to do is really associate my associate the brand with cultural things or different activities so i would try to do collaborations with, with businesses and stuff like that so yeah raise awareness for both of us like hey mm-hmm. Yeah, I check this place out. You could do such and such here. Because, you know, also a lot of people come down on vacation as well. And they, they want things to do, not just go to the, the clubs and stuff like that. So. Right. Yeah, and I, I'm glad, you know, you spoke about the act- activities that are, are available because, you know, I don't know if maybe is that we tend to see so much as, oh, this is just for the tourists. But at the end, it's your, it's your home. Yeah. You know, right. and, 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 and it's the same way. Us as locals, you know, we can uh, get into, tap into that, that, that field and, and build businesses in the area, but also um, enjoy what the island has to offer and what it offers so Definitely. M- literally millions of people. Definitely the, the cuisine. Like, there's, there's a thing I do for my birthday is, uh, let's say I make 32, I try to do 30, 32 new things, right? Mm-hmm. It could be something small, it could be something big, it's whatever you want to make it to be. And when I, whenever I'm... Whenever I'm on St. Martin and I'm doing that, like, I usually come across just so many interesting things on the island that I didn't even know was here before. Mm. But people, like, sometimes tourists will tell me about things. Hey, have you done this? And I'm like, I live here all my life and <laughs> I never yeah, know, know about this. It, right? <laughs> so it's wild sometimes. So yeah. so you mentioned uh, a key thing as far as, you know, you're working your brand and partnerships with other businesses. Uh, well, can you elaborate more on uh, how important branding is and what was your process like in building the brand, th- you know, the 37 square miles? It was super fun because I was also learning branding in school. So I got to apply <laughs> what I was learning in real time. So, like, I would partner with businesses. Like, the one of the biggest companies I partnered with was uh, Shipwreck Shops. Mm. So... And they have, like, just strategic locations placed all True. over the island. And that was, like, a crazy moment for me because I didn't even, like, envision that. Like, I could get my shirts in all these different locations at the same time. Mm-hmm. But um, that that was cool. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think about what other collaborations I did that really, you know, tied into culture. Because recently I haven't been able to do it because, you know, Hurricane Irma, that uh, that had a, a very negative impact on my business. Yeah. But um, so I haven't done much collab- collaborations recently. Wait, and you've gone digital though uh, as well? Can people purchase your shirts online? I almost was, I almost had my website finished and everything, but then Irma happened. Oh, so, gotcha. So you kind of set your so, mind a bit. And then also there was also... The issue I had with uh, the banks and and doing online yeah. purchasing, yeah. So I ran into that that uh, wall. So yeah, a wall. Many are still waiting to be to be broken. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, but uh, I saw I found out I found workarounds. Mm-hmm. So I just have to uh, implement those. Cool. And then I'll be good. Yeah, and I want to elaborate on that just a bit because it's you know like we have so many. Um, creators or businesses on this island that uh, could do very well, you know, if they're able to uh, more easily or quicker access um, um, online payments, you know, because we have products here on St. Martin that can be sold digitally, whether it's on Amazon, eBay, Etsy, whatever, um, or just in, on, on people's own host, you know, hosted um, websites. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it, it kind of sets back our ability to progress to get to, to get ahead and, and be aligned with um, mm-hmm. the norm you know in, in the industry so uh, I'm glad that you in, in, mm-hmm. in your, your your experience uh, talked about that but um well another thing too that's that's really interesting is you know as far as you see the change in um, the economy so for example like as far as one of the biggest things we see online um, where "Quote unquote new jobs or careers are concerned are like content creators and mm-hmm. and um, influencers because you know growing up I don't, y- y- you heard of just really the um, 
accountants, lawyers, you know, the, the same, let me not say simple, but the traditional job careers. But as the world grows, as technology advances, you're seeing, you know, new jobs that people never really thought of. And I know that even though you are a content creator, which is kind of like an in thing now for, for a lot of us millennials, mm-hmm. and, and even so, huge companies are actually hiring content creators and, and, and stuff to... to yeah, to, to help further build their brand and so forth. So uh, having said all of that, uh, how, how is your process like, you know, in terms of creating content, w- work in social media, and, and some of the, I guess, maybe skills you've learned along the way? Uh, the biggest thing is, for me, I would say is collaboration. So co- collaborating with other content creators, that's fun. You learn from each other, and uh, you, you both give... Uh, exposure to the other person's audience so that that is a big tip that I've learned so I worked with a lot of vlog because you asked me earlier you know what are one of the ways I brand and stuff like that is with working with uh, content creators local content creators Mm. that do vlogs or like Instagram stuff now I see TikTok is taking over yeah TikTok is kind of king right now yeah so that that is definitely one of one of the things I do but also just, just creating good content, like content people would engage with, like people that people like. So usually just it's stuff you like usually tr- rela- is relatable to other people as well. Because, yeah, you can't please everybody. So true. you might as well be as true to you as possible. And hopefully I think authenticity plays a, a huge part in, in, in amassing a large following because they're like, okay, I like how this person moving. I can relate to them. Uh, you could be inspiring to someone, motivating to someone. So I would, yeah, suggest people go on that path. Cool. Me, uh, personally, I wanted to, like, really detach myself from the brand because I like to look at myself as someone who is very, how to say, not um, not abstract. Not I look, What's the word when, when somebody is, like, different? Like... I uh, guess <laughs> yeah, different in a think. sense. That's different in a sense of that's too different. Because I, I like don't to see weird. <laughs> no, not weird. Yeah, no, but, I know um, what you mean. Um, I got, I got, I follow you. But though. yeah, so what I'm trying to say is that like I might not do something that's on brand, basically, because the shirt mm-hmm. I wanted to really represent Saint Martin and and the culture and stuff like that. But me as a uh, individual, you know. I like to venture out, experience other cultures, and and like to do other things as well. So yeah, you would consider yourself, you know, this is complex or un- uncommon, unconventional, perhaps. Yeah. So I don't want to like. I I, I, I follow you. Yeah, I don't want to mix. Yeah, two links. Together. Yeah, you want. Yeah, I, I got you. You wanna get something you created and you want it to be its own creation, apart opposed to being directly linked to to your persona. And, yeah. And your life. Yeah, yeah. For example, you know, when you look at big businesses. You know, no one person is linked to a large company. Well, they are, but... But then there's continuity. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not like that's that just... Correct. Yeah, so... Yeah. But And if they're linked to your brand, then it's understandable. But I'm not the brand. The t-shirt is its the own thing. Gotcha. Yeah, I want people to look at a t-shirt and think of home. It's yeah. Martin, not me. Like, no, I'm... I'm a consumer. I just wear the product. <laughs> yeah, I follow you. I follow yourself. So, uh, yeah, for anyone who wants to get in contact with you to, to, to get a shirt, uh, how can they um, do so? They could uh, f- follow me, uh, message me on um, Instagram and Facebook at 37 Square Miles. Uh, what else? You could also call a number. I don't know if you put, like, titles and stuff like that. <laughs> you could do that as well. And yeah, or just contact me directly, Sean Yard, on Facebook or Instagram. So yeah, that's the the best way on how to reach me out right now. But in the future, we definitely going to put up a website and you know have everything legit and and easily accessible so everyone can get shirts. Cool. All right, Sean. Thanks so much for coming by, man. I appreciate it and uh, much success with the work that you're doing. I appreciate it. Thanks again for having me.